Hey family, Marshawn Olanio here, your favorite relationship strategist, and I help Christian women that are married or in long-term relationships to stop feeling disconnected and unloved and shift you to feeling heard, understood, and appreciated. Now, I'm sure you come here because you are married or you're getting ready to get married and you want to really tap into what the six levels of communication are within your marriage, and I'm totally going to give them to you. But before I do that, I want to really showcase this book that is right behind me. I'm going to bring it a bit closer it is the 50 reasons i love the black king in my life so i actually did a survey not too long ago and i asked you guys to help me out picking out the cover i had a gray cover but obviously you see that the blue cover is the one that one and this literally is a fill in the blank book to speak words of affirmation into the black man that you adore it's very very simplistic but i really want to share with you the reason why I created this book. This beautiful book, it really is a fill in the blank book where I have 50 different prompts for you to start off with and then you complete the sentences so you can speak words of affirmation into the black king in your life. And I really want to just say thank you, but then also because I really felt like I needed to create something for black men because in my experience, black men don't get a, enough recognition they don't get enough respect from outsiders but then even some people that they're in relationships with and so i just really wanted to pay homage to the black men that i know that i love that i adore and including but not limited to my own husband so why i created this book i created this book because our black men need to feel loved respected adored and needed within the home i want black men to feel encouraged despite what the media says he is and what he does inside as well as outside the home i want black men everywhere to know that his life matters that he matters that he is needed he can be secure in knowing that he is enough your black king has not heard on a regular basis how much he is needed by you in your relationship or by your children. This book act as his reminder. This book pays homage to the black king in your life. As you affirm him through your words, he will feel your respect. He will be honored to know you and to be loved by you. He will light up when he reads how you really feel about him and what he brings to the relationship. So allow your words to flow freely as you express what your black king means to you. And so again, I just want to show you just a few of the prompts. Very simplistic. The book is in color for those of you who are wondering. So just a few prompts so you can see some of the statements that are written in here. And again, you go and fill out the book, complete the book yourself. So the Black King in your life can feel honored and respected and cherished by you. And of course, the link is down in the description box below. So now let's get into the six levels of communication within a marriage. The first level is the basic information. This is the day-to-day -day information that you deal with. It is obviously, excuse me, they are, this is information that is fact-based, such as we're eating dinner at such and such time. I have to take the children to the dentist. We're going um, to the grocery store, right? Uh, the kids are getting ready to take their bath, you know, so it's fact-based, right so that is the first level It's the basic information that you guys are speaking about throughout the day so this is the basic level of communication in your relationship and especially within your marriage the second level is partnership this is where you share your needs like your finances the needs for the children the needs as you as a parent or you know if you're taking care of your parents so these are the needs within the partnership what you need from your partner in order to help the relationship to run smoothly right so that is the second level of communication which is partnership the third level is conflict resolution this is where you stop avoiding the fights and start to resolve them. So I don't know if you watched the last video, which was literally talking about why you need to address the difficult conversations. And if you have not seen that video, then definitely check it out. The link, one of the links will pop up really soon if it has not already. Check out that video. 
as to why you need to address the difficult conversations, but literally you need to address them. But then you need to also come to the table with a resolution. A lot of people are frustrated with their conflicts because they are never resolved. And one of the people within the relationship are always wondering why we keep having the same conversation over and over and over again. But the reason why you keep having that same conversation over and over and over again is because the conflict was never resolved. There was never any solution or resolution to the problem, right? So if there was never a solution, if you never brought a solution to the party, if your partner was only just complaining but never brought a solution, then this thing has never been resolved, which is why you keep going through this same conflict as if it happened yesterday. You know, when, when your partner is telling you something that happened and they're rehashing that thing, and some people even say that their spouses can rehash things from years ago, that happens because the, the, the issue was never resolved. So don't just go and complain. Don't just go and bring up the conversation. Go when you have a clear head, when you're able to talk about the why, why this thing hurts you, why you don't want it to go this way, why why you want to, um, you know, feel needed, respected, honored, all of that stuff, right? And then the third thing, you must come with a solution or the conflict will never be resolved. And in that, when coming to a solution, you have your solution, your spouse has their solution, and you you might not agree on either solution. So come somewhere in the middle, give a little bit of hers, a little bit of his, come somewhere in the middle so you can get this thing resolved so you can move the relationship forward because what ends up happening is that the couple stays stuck right there in that issue which is why you get so much passion which is why you get so many tears which is why you hear this thing as if it happened yesterday because they are reliving that same day that same conversation so resolve it, resolve the issue, resolve the problem so you can stop having the conversation, right? So that is number three. Number four is connection. Connection is like eye contact, it is touch, it is what we say to each other. So the words that we use, the phrases that we use, right? So that's why we really have to watch our tongue because in the things that you say, this tongue of ours can connect this or disconnect us, right? And so obviously you want to be connected. You wanna be able to look your spouse in the eye and have that deep connectedness. So I don't know if you realized this or knew this tidbit of information, but if you guys can sit there for, I think it's up to five minutes. Yeah, I think it's up to five minutes. I might be wrong about the time frame, but the point is this where you and your spouse can literally just sit there and stare one another in the eye, you bring about so much connection that sex becomes inevitable because you feel like you really, really know this person. And I'm actually talking about where you guys are just looking at one another with no conversation. It's like a really intense drawing that you feel for your spouse. And the funny part about this little exercise, exercise is that not many people can do this because they say that the eyes are the windows to your soul, right? And so you really feel vulnerable when you're staring into another person's eyes. But if you can stare into the eyes of your spouse for five minutes, you will feel really, really connected to him or to her. And again, sex is pretty much inevitable, right? It doesn't happen all the time, but definitely after the first time that you do it, especially if you can get to the point where you've done this for five minutes, you're not touching, you're not talking, you're just looking and staring into each other's eyes. Let me know if you try that. If you try that out, please let me know how it goes for you. Come back to this video or comment it on another video because I really want to hear how this worked out for you. But I know it's true. 
<laughs> okay, number five is being vulnerable. So go back to level four, which is the connectedness that I connection that I just talked about. You are very vulnerable by staring into your spouse's eyes. So again, level five is being vulnerable, which is the ability to share all of yourself. Being able to just relinquish and let go of all the things that's been holding you back. All of the things that you have been fearful of sharing with your spouse for fear of judgment, for fear of shame, for fear of guilt, for fear of um, just being laughed at, for fear of them saying that's not real, right? We all want to be, to be believed. We all want somebody to feel connected to. And you can do that, but, but you must be vulnerable. There are no relationships. And I mean none. I'm talking about platonic, um, um, sibling, friendship, all of those relationships. None of them can become deep if there is no vulnerability. And in your romantic life, it is no different. Most of the time we feel safer and secure with our friends and are able to open up and share things that really plague us when we're thinking about our spouse. And it's because they were able to share and open up and be vulnerable with you and you let it be a safe space for them. And then in turn, they actually did the same thing for you. So you feel safe with your friends. You should feel safe with your spouse as well, but you have to be willing to open up that door and then walk through it but you gotta be willing to open up and share all of you in order to get to this sixth level because a lot of people get stuck at the conflict resolution, which is only level three. Most people never get past learning how to resolve their conflicts. And so if most people don't get past this, the last level, which is the intimate connection, number six, being able to really express your love, the things that you would only say to your spouse, right? Most people don't reach that level. They're usually sharing those things outside with someone else. So if you can allow yourself to be completely vulnerable, if you can get past and really understand and master resolving those conflicts, so then you can get to the next level, which is feeling like you're really connected with your spouse. And then level five, which is being vulnerable. So you can get to the intimate connection. You guys can have an awesome, awesome marriage. This does take work. It does take practice. You're not going to always get it right. But as I mentioned before, if you are willing to start if you are willing to start today, whatever today is for you, no matter when you are watching this, you can totally, totally change the, tra the, the trajectory of your relationship completely around. And I mean completely around where next year you won't even recognize or even fathom that you guys were not in a healthy space. You have to be willing to open up and say, you know what? Okay, we're actually good at level one. We, we do good with level one. We, we do good with the basic information. Level two, we good there too. We got some partnership. Level three, we stuck at conflict resolution. So how do you move the relationship forward? And if you are a part of the people that's past the being able to resolve the conflict, that's when things become more smooth sailing. You feel like you really, really know your partner. However, you could get stuck at the connection part, right? But some people are, again, you don't want to expose yourself, right? Touch, I don't know, touch. I don't want to touch, right? We There are always going to be certain levels that we're going to get stuck at. And so you have to be willing to push past the things that are keeping you stuck in order to feel completely connected as well as one, right? Because he and she come together and create one body. It's really hard to get to this one body. 
And these are some of the things that people don't talk about when you're getting married or even after you get married, right? It's some things that you must learn that becoming one is a tough process, but it doesn't have to be if you and your spouse are willing to do the work to actually shed all of your junk, open up, talk about the things that you like, dislike, love, want to do, what goals you want to reach, and being able to just truly be yourself. All right, I hope that this has helped you. Again, go ahead and pick up your copy of 50 Reasons. I love the Black King in my life. Pick up your copy today. My name is Marshawn Olanio. If you need any help, definitely send me an email at Marshawn. I'm MarshawnOlanio.com. That information is down in the description box below. I love you guys. There's nothing that you can do about it. And I will talk to you later. Bye.